Welcome to the Nightclub Guys, it's your host, the Night Wrencher. I am in the middle of cutting up this 1970 Dodge Charger and getting it ready to install new body panels. The tool that I'm using to cut the sheet metal is actually this inverter style plasma cutter by Warking or W Arking. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And I was a little apprehensive at first when I ordered it. I wasn't sure what to expect. I have another plasma cutter that I would use and it is a dual voltage. This one is a 240 specific voltage. But what really sold me on this plasma cutter is that it doesn't require an external air source. You guys can see right here in the front that it has two fittings. On the one on the left is for external air, the one on the right is for internal air. There's two passages inside of the plasma cutter. When you guys look in the back of the plasma cutter, you'll see that there is an air regulator and there is a hose for air. But there's also this little cap here, but it's not a cap. This is actually a filter. And that filter is actually to protect the air going into the plasma cutter. So this plasma cutter has an internal motor. And this motor is an air pump that actually runs through and pressurizes the system. So you can actually use the plasma cutter. I've tried to use other plasma cutters on portable air compressors. And it doesn't really work out. The air compressors can't really put out the CFM. But this one, it seems to be a really high efficiency model. Because it seems to be able to keep up even though I'm cutting quarter inch steel. I mentioned before that this is a 220 plug, so it uses a NEMA 6-50, and I went out to my local hardware store and I made myself an adapter. I have a four-prong outlet right here on the wall that we run for our electric stove whenever I do powder coating. So I made myself an extension cord with the correct adapter on it in a non-metallic box, and it seems to be working just fine. What seemed to have impressed me the most was actually the cut quality, despite the fact that the machine can produce a pretty hefty amount of amps. I was able to turn it down low enough so I can cut real delicate shapes into the sheet metal. While I was testing it and decided to cut a piece of quarter inch plate, it was able to cut right through that like butter as well. The machine does take a little bit of trial and error, but it's pretty standard compared to other equipment on the market. According to the display, it looks like the minimum amps that you can use is about 24 amps and the maximum as far as I've seen is 52. The box says that the maximum amps are 45. So I don't know if this machine is putting out more amps or if it's just calibrated differently. Aside from the plasma cutter itself, it came with two leads which are super long. They're about eight feet long. We've got a nice uh, beefy ground and then we have the actual torch. The torch is in this uh, nice heavy duty sleeve and the connection is right here in a three prong connector. For the ground, it uses the smaller DIN connector or DINN connector. It uses the smaller one, so it's compatible with a lot of the off the shelf machines that you can get at your local discount box stores. The air is just a standard compression fitting and it comes with some red hose. If you guys wanted to upgrade this or put some bigger fittings, I'm sure you could. Uh, it would just take a couple of adapters to get it to work again. Right here in the front, you actually see internal and external air source. It says gas source, but I'm sure it means compressed air source. When you switch it to external, it's not going to power on the internal compressor. It's just going to rely on whatever air you pump in from the back. If you put it on internal, it'll activate the compressor. So the thing about this machine is that it doesn't have a pilot arc. So when you push the button, you'll start hearing air. The compressor will turn on but nothing's gonna happen. You can keep tapping it and tapping it and nothing's gonna happen. It's not until you actually get close to the steel that the torch will actually activate. So you have to be wary of where you're pointing it at and make sure that everything's grounded properly. If it's not grounded properly, you're not gonna be able to cut anything. After you finish your arc, the compressor is gonna keep on running to cool the tip in order to prevent damage to the torch itself. On, on the other plasma cutters that I've ran, you probably want to run an air gap between the torch and the material, and that's just so you can allow your consumables to last a little bit longer. Obviously, you're going to get a cleaner cut if you run this torch right up against the material you're trying to cut, but if you guys are trying to let your consumables last a little bit longer, you guys should probably have a paper-thin air gap between the base metal and the tip of the torch. I've also been able to cut aluminum and it does a pretty good job, but you have to know exactly what you're doing because if you mess up a little bit, you can make a really huge mess. So it's probably not set up to cut aluminum, but it does have the capability. So if you need to cut a quick piece, this is one eighth inch thick so, and it can cut right through it without any problem. You just really have to be careful in how you hold that torch. As a quick tip for you guys, if you guys ever wanna cut straight lines with the plasma cutter, like let's say you wanna cut a star or a diamond or something, go ahead and trace out whatever you're trying to cut and then figure out where 
the distance between the firing part of the tip and the edge of the cup is and then when you go ahead and start cutting you can go ahead and follow any kind of straight piece of metal or wood and then that'll give you a nice clean cut as long as you hold the torch at a straight 90 degree angle you should be able to get a nice cut if you kind of move the torch left and right you're going to get a wobbly cut or a very wide cut and then that'll translate to a very messy cut so if you guys are trying to do some precise work try to keep it at a perfect 90 and for straight lines go ahead and put it up against something and then just cut that straight across here's a good example of what happens when you don't cut at a perfect 90 so it looks good here until I straighten it out and you can't really tell but if you go ahead and look at this on its side you can see that there is a definite angle in this cut I must have leaned it over to one side and now you guys can see that this thing is not a perfectly straight cut. If I hold it like this at an angle, yeah, obviously it's gonna look good, but this is all trial and error. I've also got some blobs up here from where I didn't finish the cut correctly. You wanna finish your cut pretty much in one sweep because if you don't finish it, you're gonna have a huge problem. So you wanna keep that as neat as possible. You wanna make sure that you get a bunch of practice in before you actually go out and cut important pieces of sheet metal. Find yourself a little bit of scrap iron to practice on before you actually move on to the real thing. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and try the external air source option. So we're gonna go ahead and move the red hose from the right side internal fitting to the left side external fitting. And then we're gonna go ahead and hook up the included pressure regulator on the back side. The machine comes with its own regulator. All you need to do is add your own air fitting to match your air hose. And it also includes a nylon hose that you can just press in. It also comes with hose clamps, but with the low PSI that you're gonna be running, it's not always necessary, but it is recommended. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the air source. And now we're gonna go ahead and up the pressure. We're gonna bring it up to about one bar or about 15 PSI. Now that we've got it to the PSI that we want, we're gonna go ahead and turn the machine back on. And now we're going to go ahead and test it. The beauty of using an external air source is that you can regulate the amount of air that goes into the plasma cutter, which allows you to either make the cuts finer or more coarse depending on the air pressure desired. The purpose of adding more air pressure is so they can move more molten metal out of the cut as you're going along. Lower pressure allows the cut to stay a little bit finer on the bottom side. Higher pressure allows you to move more volume out, but it also leaves a messier cut. In, in order to cut the panels of sheet metal on your cars, you guys are gonna need to find a nice mix of heat and travel speed because if you move too fast and the cut is too cold, you're not gonna cut all the way through. If you're moving too fast, the cut's not gonna penetrate. If you're moving too slow, you might warp the panel more than you need to. So you need to find that balance between heat and travel speed in order to get the perfect cut. Overall, I ended up really impressed with this machine, far more than I thought I was going to for the price. You really can't find a better machine than this. I'll have a link to it in the description down below so you guys can check it out. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.